Good morning, Rock Church. Welcome. I'm Deb Bromley. Welcome to Family and Friends Weekend. Uh, this is a weekend where we have a chance to not have to gather together at church, but um, connect with the people who are important in our world, or have a rest, or catch up on some jobs, whatever you need to do. Um, my hope is that you're enjoying yourselves this morning. Um, next week, we're back here again at 114 Buchan Street together, time of live worship, NTY Kids Ministry, stay behind afterwards for some fellowship and some morning tea and a chance to connect. Um, now, even though we're not meeting in person, we still have opportunity to give um, into Rock Church and um, up on the screen in a moment, there'll be ways that you can do that online into our different causes. But I need to let you know in two weeks' time, we have our Mission Sunday, which is very exciting, where you have an opportunity to turn up in your cultural dress and maybe bring a plate of food from the place you're from. Or if you want to adopt a nation and dress up in those clothes or bring a certain type of food, fantastic, bring it all along and it will be an opportunity to hear about some of the missions that Rock Church are involved in both locally and globally. Now, our giving should never be out of compulsion um, or feeling that we're being forced to give, but our giving is a way of us um, acknowledging who God is and choosing to invest in his kingdom priorities and then reflecting that in action um, to our community and the world around us. So at Rock, we do that by making a declaration together um, which is just our form of agreement with each other and, and with God, um, acknowledging that all we have is first his. So let's um, stand if you want to, um, but just declare together from declaration number six. Today we declare together, you are a good, good father, and we thank you for your grace and love. We come with joyful hearts to freely participate with you in our giving we join you in creative ways to do good, to help meet the needs of others as an expression of your love. In times of uncertainty, we hear your voice, inviting us to trust you. Thank you, Jesus, that in you we can overcome every challenging situation. You're the one who meets all of our needs according to the riches of your grace towards us in Christ. Because of your grace, we can live freely and generously. You are good. This offering is a testimony of your goodness towards us. Therefore, today, with great joy and gratitude, we give and we trust you. Amen. Okay, so I'm coming at you this morning from the couch, so I'm relaxed and comfortable. I hope that you are too. Um, there on your couch, you might still be in bed, that's fine, wherever you want to be. But anyway, that's what this weekend is all about, relaxing. And I'm just going to share with you from the heart and in a relaxed way this morning, just some of my thoughts and ideas and things that I've been challenged by and thinking about over the last um, couple of weeks. So it's just like a chat really. And the great thing is that as I ramble on, you're not going to interrupt me. And you're not going to disagree with what I'm saying. So that's fantastic. Or if you do, I'm not going to hear you. So I hope you'll give me license to do that. That's Today's title of the talk is actually all about the journey. So I'm going to be sharing a bit about the journey I'm, I'm on at the moment. Um, so on Thursday night, um, I finished part of what has been a pretty awesome journey this year because I've been part of the Rock School of Sonship. Um, and journeying with about 12 or so people um, weekly. We've been meeting, um, doing a number of things. One of them is we've been um, reading this book called The Word Made Flesh. And in that, we've been digging deeper and um, you know, wrestling and contemplating this whole idea that, that, that God, the creator God of the universe, came to earth as a human being, like he chose, he didn't choose to come in a, in a book or a philosophy or a you know, political regime or a manifesto. Um, he chose to reveal himself to humanity, to mankind as a human being in the flesh, so like us. 
yeah, which is amazing. And then on top of that, um, we have been um, hearing from different um, speakers from around the world who've Zoomed in mostly. Some of them have come in person to speak to us. And we've been hearing from some masterclasses. And every one of those ma masterclasses has been like a light bulb moment going on, one after the other saying, wow, wow, wow. Like suddenly grasping and understanding more of who God is and who he calls us to be, I suppose. But in that, the way I've explained it is that um, it's I sort of have known this stuff all along, but um, I, I maybe have lost my way a little bit or gone off track in my journey. But just in this year, everything I've heard at the School of Sonship has been resonating and, and the s similar themes are coming through and what I'm listening to and what I'm reading um, back at the start of last year. You know, we've been in a bit of an interesting season in the world, but at the start of last year, I committed to reading books again. And at the start of this year, I committed to a journey of prayer. So I have been reading a lot and I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. And um, if you want some recommendations, you can ask me because I'm happy to give some. But everything has just been falling into place. And I've described it, it's been a bit like a homecoming like, oh, I'm finally in a place where it feels comfortable and I belong and it all sort of makes, makes sense. So that's a little bit about how my School of Sonship journey has been. And I've also really valued being able to do that journey with others and just share my heart and the things of faith in a journey with other people. You know, the, in the Bible, it calls that fellowship. Um, so it's like friendship, but like a, a deeper, deeper level of connection. We're not just connecting um, because we have the same hobby or, you know, we're in the same family. We're connecting because we have Jesus in common and we put him in the center of the things that we're talking about in our discussions and we're wrestling the things of faith. Actually, in the Bible, um, that's what, you know, the Jewish people did. They wrestled and explored and debated the scriptures. It wasn't just a doctrine that they were had forced upon them and believed. They wrestled with it and, and mulled over it and chewed over it and journeyed with it. And I think that's what God wants us to do. So that's been a little part of my journey. Um, you know, we're all on a journey of faith. Um, and we've heard a couple of really great talks just in the last two weeks. And one of them um, was from Randall Worley. And he was talking about this um, idea of transitioning because our journey is often... Um, sort of broken up by periods of transition. And Randall said that transition is the ongoing curriculum of life. And he said, transition is the nebulous space between where we are and where we're going, where God recalibrates and redefines who we are uh, to reintroduce us to the next step of the journey. And I, I thought that was great. And then just last week, we had Gary Rucci here. So I know some of you, if you were here, you've really enjoyed his teaching. But he shared this word with the team last Friday that I'd never heard, and I love hearing new words, but the word he told us was liminality. Well, that's a new word to me, but it's actually from a Latin word limin, which means threshold. And when I googled um, the meaning of um, the dic dictionary definition of liminality, it said the psychological process of transitioning across boundaries and borders. So that's like a journey, but not maybe a physical journey that we're walking out or a time, you know, a journey in time, but a journey that goes on in our minds, like a psychological transitioning and journey and process. So. You know, we're going through those things all the time, aren't we, in our journey um, with those steps of transition into a new season. Um, my family and I, you might know, we're in the middle of a journey at the moment and a transition to a new season where we're actually leaving Cairns in January and we're moving um, to the UK. Um, a bit foolish, you might be saying. Why would we leave the tropical summer of the far north and move back to the winter in Europe? I don't know. That's going to be an interesting part of the journey and maybe not a very wise timing decision on our part, but I'll let you know how that goes. But there's been a process in us reaching this decision. We haven't just rashly decided to do this. We've been journeying and contemplating and um, 
you know, having had some promptings and some signs and some circumstances and things that have opened up that have led us to making that decision and probably have had a bit of a holy discontent for some time knowing that it's time to move on, but maybe resisting that and fighting a bit with God, but, but then having clarity that this is the right timing and, and having joy in that, that he's with us and he's showing us the way forward, which has been exciting, but we're definitely um, on a journey. Um, into the new at the moment in our family and you know the bible features a lot of journeys you might have noticed that and one of the key journeys I it probably springs to mind for you as well is that journey of the Israelites in the desert where they escaped Egypt and the tyranny of Pharaoh and miraculously they escaped across the parted Red Sea um, that then closed in and drowned the chasing, the pursuing Egyptians. Um, and then after that, they spent a journey, what should have been a 17-day journey, you probably know this, but they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years. Um, and, you know, I, I think we can learn a lot of lessons for that because one of the things they did in the wilderness was they complained and they grumbled and they... I looked back nostalgically to the past, thinking, you know, back in the good old days, we did things this way, forgetting the things that weren't so good about the good old days. And um, I think that, I think we can really learn lessons from that because sometimes our journeys are like that. We're grumbling and complaining. We either want to go back to where we came from or we really want to get to where we're going. But, you know, the amazing Judah Gregg, who was part of our School of Sonship group, he gave this analogy um, a couple of weeks ago where he said, you don't listen to a piece of music um, with the intention of getting to the end. You know, it would be a bit stupid, you know, just hear the start and then I'll just fast forward to the end. Uh, you list, when you listen to a piece of music, you're engaged in the piece of music and all the you know, highs and lows and the depths and the transitions of the music and the bridge and the chorus and you're enjoying that piece of music while you're listening to it, while you're in it. And he said, Judah said, I don't want to go through life, um, you know, just to get to the end of the journey, try and get to where I'm going and forget to dance in the process. So we need to remember to dance to the music in the process, in the journey. That's what it's all about. Love that. Thank you for that, Judah. You know, Randall Worley also shared with us the other week um, uh, something about that word wait, W-A-I-T, wait. And as it's used in the Bible in that Isaiah 40 passage where it says, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Um, and the word wait used there, um, the meaning of that, the way that word is used um, is not like impatiently, you know, like, hmm, you know, waiting, waiting, getting a bit angry. But it's actually a word used um, for, for a rope and the way a rope is made um, in the weaving and the intricacy of weaving all those strands together for a purpose and for a strengthening, obviously. So I think, you know, that's that again is such an amazing analogy of how... Um, in, in our journey, God is um, weaving all the strands together for the finished purpose um, and strengthening us in that process. So we shouldn't despise you know, the journey we're on when we're in it, just waiting to get to the other end. Um, makes me think of a song, and I thought I'd just do a little Pastor Henry at this point and just sing to you a little bit on a Sunday morning. You might know this song. Ain't about how fast I get there. Ain't about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb. I know you'll probably want me on the worship team next week. That's so far. Okay, give me a call. But Miley Cyrus' classic tune about the climb. It's not about how fast we get there. It's not about what's going to wait for us when we get there. It's about the journey. It's about the process, the climb, the dance. Yeah, You know, all this revelation has actually been a little bit tricky for me because I'm a very task-oriented person. I love um, to complete my tasks. I love getting through my to-do list. Uh, my husband knows this. He's in Papua New Guinea at the moment, and he always tells me if you achieve one thing in a day in PNG, that is a good day. He said if you get to do more than one thing in the day and achieve more than one thing, you've overachieved that day. 
And I really struggle with that because I have a lot of things I want to get through each day and I'm not satisfied and I can't settle and rest in my bed at night until I've got through my to-do list. But as I've got older, I've actually found that I never get to the end of the to-do list. Mine's quite long at the moment because we've got a lot to do before we move. But um, I'm realising that actually I need to find the joy and the contentment in that process, not just desperate to get to the end of something and think I'm going to rest then because it never actually seems to happen. Um, uh, the good news is I found a guy in the Bible who did a lot of journeying um, in the New Testament. He went on a lot of journeys and one of the first journeys we know about with him is he was actually on his way to a town called, called Damascus. You might know this story. And um, it's in, I've written it down, Acts 19, I think. can't see in my notes, but I think it's in Acts 19. On the way, he was arrested by God, not literally arrested, but stopped by God, blinded by a light, and fell to his knees and heard the voice of God because he was on his way to persecute some Christians because he was a very religious man, didn't like this new group of people who had sprung up following the way, saying that the Messiah had come in this person of Jesus. Um, and in that moment, um, Saul, who then became Paul later, was stopped in his track, stopped on that journey and redirected to a whole different journey. Um, and you might um, know a bit about Paul in the Bible, but I'm just going to read to you from then on. Uh, he embarked on multiple journeys, actually over a period of 26 years. As I look this up, between AD 34 and AD 60, he went on multiple journeys to share with other people the good news, the gospel about Jesus Christ. But, you know, on his journeys, it wasn't all smooth sailing, literally. Here's some of the things he encountered. Um, he worked hard. He was put in prison often. He was whipped innumerable times. He faced death again and again. He was given 39 lashes five times back in those days. It, like 40 lashes was, was thought to be enough to kill somebody. So the severest punishment was to give 39, which is like just getting you to the brink of death. That had happened to Paul five times. He was beaten with rods three times. He was stoned, shipwrecked three times, spent 24 hours adrift at sea, traveled long journeys. He was robbed and in danger. He went without sleep and food and water. He shivered with cold without warm clothing. Quite some journey, really. Makes our modern first world problems look a bit insignificant, doesn't it? And our journeying. But you know what Paul kept throughout every journey, um, right from that first one we hear about when he was on his way to Damascus to persecute Christians, is he had a zeal, he had a passion and a, and a courage um, and a fervor to keep um, pursuing his cause and, and latterly, obviously, thankfully, it was to share the good news of Jesus. And um, you might know that he wrote a, well, most of the letters in the New Testament after the book of Acts were written by Paul. So we're still following the things that he wrote and shared with us today, 2,000 years later, because of his zeal and fervor for his cause um, and what he did on his journey. He says in Philippians 3.14, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. He pressed on. So may I encourage you today in your journey to press on. Don't stagnate. Um, because I think God wants us to be moving and then he can steer us. I often share this. I think God can steer a moving target. If we're just sitting, waiting I'm waiting for God to show me. I'm praying about it. You know, are you really? I think God wants us to move. God wants us to journey. And then he's the one who steers us. Um, your journey isn't just about you either. It's about the future generations to come. And Paul knew this full well as well. He had some younger people he was discipling and probably most notably in the New Testament we, we've got the books of Timothy and Titus who are young people that Paul um, mentored um, and in 1 Titus 5 Paul says to Titus I left you behind so you might put in order what was left unfinished so this is a sense that in Paul's journey he didn't think he had to do it all he knew that there were others coming behind who he encouraged to continue you know, the journey that he was on um, 
And I think, you know, remember ultimately that our creator God, the word made flesh, is ever with, ever with us. Emmanuel, God with us. It's not that we have to um, struggle and strive um, for his presence. He's with us anyway. He'll equip us when we um, commit ourselves to journeying with him. One of my favorite scriptures is in Habakkuk 3.19. Um, we actually named our daughter after this scripture, Tabitha. Her name means gazelle. And the scripture says, The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer, and he enables me to tread on the heights. Um, there's that sense that um, you know, a mountain gazelle can actually scale up you know, almost vertically up a mountain. Um, just has the ability to do that. So the scripture is saying that with God, uh, he enables us to tread places and to journey places that we wouldn't even contemplate or we wouldn't have the courage to journey on our own. So we need to know he's not, he's not leaving us alone. He's with us. And, and he's the one who enables us to reach our full potential. You know, potential is like energy not yet used. You know, he puts that in each one of us and he equips us. Um, for our unique purpose and potential and journey that he has us on. Um, so I encourage you today, um, as I finish, um, you know, I pray a blessing on you in your journey, but I've got a little treat to finish with. Um, and I had no idea of this um, on Thursday night when we had our School of Sonship final presentations. And two of our young men in the school, Oscar and Judah, um, did their final assessment by delivering a song that they had written. And amazingly, I had no comprehension of this, even though I heard a lot of jingly jangly music coming from Oscar's room over and over again for about three nights for about five hours. And I thought, what is going on? But I only heard sort of the, the melody, the, the back note. I didn't hear the rest of it. When I heard it on Thursday night, I'm like, oh my goodness, this song is about what I wanted to convey today in this talk about the journey. And they probably have done it better than I have in this rambling with you on the couch for the last 20 minutes. But um, I'm privileged that I'm going to share this story. Um, I think it's called it's called Dance Forever, and I think it has another title as well that I've forgotten. So sorry, um, but it's debuting right here now, and what a privilege that I get to introduce it. And um, I'm yeah honoured to be able to do that. And I just want to say, have a blessed week, everybody. Enjoy the journey, and don't forget to dance. Life is a journey of road, focus on where we should go. 
Most of these people, they focus on looking and hoping I'm making it home. That's not the way we should roll. That thing was never the goal. So put down your windows and breathe in the season whenever you feeling it blow. Hey, I'ma just dance in the moment, get bands in the moment. I feel like the man in the moment. I'm never gonna pass on the moment. I'm passing the moment because God put my plans in the motion. I'm going, I'm going, I'm moving to all of the beautiful sounds and the music. The music is life and I'm doing it right. Praying the journey is where we abide. So I'ma dance till forever. And trust in God through the weather. Then we can make it together. Just let go of the pressure. Feel the wave, feel the wave now. Feel the wave, feel the wave now. Feel the wave, feel the wave now. Feel the wave, feel the wave now.